Hi there, Mr. Richards here, and today's lesson is on multiplication and division equations. Our objective is to solve one-step multiplication and division equations. Now, I know a lot of you are going, I've already done this before, but this is the middle of three lessons that will help to reinforce all the skills that you need to solve more complicated equations. So I encourage you to keep an open mind, to keep learning, and to try to really hammer down these fundamentals so we can be good when we get to more difficult equations. So we're going to start this lesson with a vocabulary startup. The expression 3x means 3 times the value of x. The numerical factor of a multiplication expression like 3x is called a coefficient. So this number part of 3x, this 3, is called the coefficient. So 3 is the coefficient of x. Okay, thank you. The figure below illustrates the multiplication equation 3x equals 6. We have 3x equals 6. And you can see in the model how we have 1x equals just 2. So, write an equation that represents each of the models below. Identify the coefficient in your equation, then solve. Well, our initial equation here in number 1, we have 3x's. So 3x equals, and we have 12 of those positive 1, so 3x equals 12. Our coefficient is 3. And we can look at it just like in the example above, where we have these circles here, so each x has... Four. What about the next one? Well, I have two x's here, and this is not going to be equal to a positive 8, but it's going to equal a negative 8. And once again, I can see how just one x is going to be negative 4, and of course our coefficient here was just 2. So now we come to the division property of equality. And this states that two sides of an equation remain equal when you divide each side by the same non-zero number. And you can see that in symbols there. And let me just break this down for us a bit. 6 equals 6 is an equation. The left side equals the right side. Now, if I were to divide both sides by the same number, in this case, 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and well, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and it still maintains its equality. And so, basically, if I divide the same number on both sides of an equation, I'm still going to have the same thing. Now, how does this work with equations and going to solve equations? Well, in the equation 20 equals 4x, or 4 times x, the inverse operation for multiplication is division. So we can simply divide by this term 4 on both sides. We want to divide the coefficient, the 4, and so we get 5 equals x. And you can always check your equations. If you rewrite the original equation, you substitute in your answer, so 5, and 4 times 5 is 20. 20 equals 20, so our solution is 5. Same thing works for negative numbers, but if I have a coefficient of negative 8, times y equals 24. Well, if I divide by this negative 8 on both sides, then I have 24 divided by a negative 8 is negative 3. Since a positive divided by the negative is a negative. And I can once again check this the same way. Start with our equation, negative 8y equals 24. Substitute in the negative 3. And the negative times a negative is the positive 24, which equals the right side. So our solution is negative 3. Let's try three of these on our own now. So the first one we have 30 equals 6x. Well, let's go ahead and divide by the coefficient, the 6 on both sides. This cancels out, and 30 divided by 6 is 5 equals x. Now our directions do say to check our solution, so we're going to check this by rewriting the original equation. 30 equals 6x. 
and what we're going to do here is rewrite our 30 equals 6 times, and we're going to substitute in our value for x, 5. Our left side of the equation stays 30, and 6 times 5 is 30, and since the left side is equal to the right side, then we know our solution of 5 equals x or x equals 5 is correct. What about b? Well, our coefficient here is negative 6. We have negative 6 times a equals 36. So here we're going to divide by a negative 6 on both sides of the equation. Negative 6 divided by negative 6 cancels. And we're left with a equals a positive divided by a negative is a negative. And 36 divided by 6 is 6. So a equals negative 6 is our solution. Now when I go to check this, start with the original equation, negative 6a equals 36, and we're going to once again substitute in the negative 6 as our answer, so negative 6 times negative 6 should equal 36, and sure enough the negative times a negative is a positive 36 equals 36, so a equals negative 6 is our solution. Now I know I touched in the previous lesson about the importance of a check step. And here's a check step gone wrong. If we have negative 6a equals 36, and let's pretend you had your answer a equals just a positive 6 because you made a mistake, happens every day to all of us. Either way, if you put in 6 for that a equals 36, be honest with yourself. Don't just assume 36 is going to equal 36. Ask yourself, well, what is negative 6 times 6? Well, that's negative 36, and that is not equal to a positive 36. And so if this were to happen to you when you're solving your own equations, go back. Well, no, A does not equal 6. And try again. Try to find your mistake so you can get to A equals negative 6. Again, check steps are only good if you're honest as you use them. Now, back to C. We have negative 9 times D equals negative 72. And so if I divide by negative 9 on both sides, it's the term with the D, the coefficient. The negative 9's here cancel, and we're left with D equals a negative divided by a negative is a positive, and in this case, 8. And as we go to check this last one here, negative 9 d equals negative 72. Substitute in your 8 for d. And negative 9 times negative 8 is negative 72, and that does equal negative 72, so once again, we're good to go there. d equals 8. Now, of course, we can solve equations with word problems, or word problems with equations, there we go. Layla sent 574 text messages last week. On average, how many messages did she send each day? Well, 574 equals the messages in a week. And there are seven days in a week. And so if we take seven times the number of messages she sends in one day, that's our correct equation. Then we divide by seven on both sides to get 82 equals m. So 82 messages on average each day. Yikes, that's a lot. Now for our own problem. Mrs. Acosta's car can travel an average of 24 miles on each gallon of gasoline. Write and solve an equation to find how many gallons of gasoline she will need for a trip of 348 miles. So we're going to have our 24 miles on each gallon and we need to figure out how many gallons of gas she needs for a trip. So we can just say, okay, 24 times those number of gallons needs to equal the 348 miles. So if we divide by 24 on both sides here, g is going to equal 14 and 5 tenths, or 14 and a half gallons. Now, just like we had a division property of equality, we also have a multiplication property of equality, and this states 
that two sides of an equation remain equal if you multiply each side by the same number. If A equals B, then AC equals BC. And we're going to use that to solve equations as well. And again, just to make sure that this kind of makes sense to us, if we have 4 equals 4, which I think we all assume is true, if I take a, the number 2 and multiply 2 on both sides of that, I end up with 8 equals 8. The left side still equals the right side, so as long as I multiply the same number on both sides of an equation, then the equation will still be, you know, true. In our guided example 4 here, we have a divided by negative 4. Now this is a way of saying division equals negative 9. If we multiply by negative 4 on both sides, we can get a equals 36. Let's try a few of these on our own. y divided by negative 3 equals 8, or negative 8. Now I'm going to rewrite this here to have a little bit of room. Now I need to, this is y divided by negative 3, so I need to multiply by a negative 3 on both sides. This cancels, and we're left with y equals negative 8 times negative 3 is a positive 24. And when we go to check this, if we rewrite our equation, y divided by negative 3 equals negative 8, and make our substitution of 24, in for y, 24 divided by negative 3 should equal negative 8, and sure enough, 24 divided by negative 3 is negative 8, so negative 8 equals negative 8. Our solution then is y equals 24. For f, m divided by 5 equals negative 7. Well here if we multiply by 5 on both sides, this cancels, and we're left with m equals negative 35. So when we go to check, m divided by 5 equals negative 7. Put in the negative 35 for m, so negative 35 divided by 5 should equal negative 7. And sure enough, negative 35 divided by a positive 5 is negative 7 equals negative 7. So our solution of m equals negative 35 is correct. Now, a common question, whether it's a one-step equation or a multi-step equation, is, well, where am I going? Where do I start? The best instructions I can give are to look for the variable. Here we have b divided by negative 6, and it's on the right side of the equation this time. The first two were on the left side. This time it's on the right side. So when we look for what number are we going to either multiply or divide on both sides of the equation, start by looking for your variable. Now I'm going to rewrite this as 30 equals b divided by negative 6. And I'm not going to multiply 30 on both sides. I'm going to multiply, in fact, negative 6 on both sides here. As this will cancel out, and I'm left with negative 180 on the left, and just b alone on the right, and that's what I want. Negative 180 equals b. When I go to check this, rewrite the original equation again. 30 equals b divided by negative 6. Left side of the equation this time is going to stay the same. Our b was negative 180 divided by negative 6. Left side stays 30. Right side, negative 180 divided by negative 6 is once again 30. And those are our solutions. What about our word problem here? Well, the distance d that Tina travels in her car while driving 60 miles per hour for 3 hours is given by the equation d divided by 3 equals 60. How far did she travel? Now before we get into that, there will be a couple questions about the distance formula, and typically the distance formula is distance equals rate times time, which is written as d equals rt. But there's a couple different ways that you can uh, manipulate this. If we have d equals rt, and I choose to say divide by t on both sides, well that cancels out and I get my r to equal d divided by t, which is what you see right there. 
Or what if in my d equals rt, distance equals rate times time, I were to divide by the rate first? Well, the rates there cancel out, and I'm left with the time, in fact, equals distance divided by the rate. So when you look, wait, how does d equals rt here, distance equals rate times time, get to be rate equals distance divided by time, or time equals distance divided by rate? Well, there you have it. Now, they picked the d divided by 3 equals 60. And so you can see the equation here. They multiplied by 3 on both sides and got the distance of 180 miles. That's it for this lesson. Good luck.